This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. West Michigan Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hello, and I'd like to welcome you to another segment of Silent Voices. Our co-host Sandy Santos sat down and interviewed Melissa Fleury of Kalkaska, Michigan. She's a mother that had been battered by her husband a little twist in this, uh, her children ended up in foster care for a year. And then her husband, through the divorce proceedings, ended up getting custody of these children. It's a real shocking story. Before we have that interview, though, Melissa would like to read a poem that she wrote for her children. Melissa? I fall asleep each night to a silence that consumes and wake each morning to two empty rooms. I stare at their photos with tears on my face and pray for hours for God's love and grace. As I close my eyes, I hear the children's sound, but when I wake, neither is around. As I hold their pillows, it's them that I smell. I miss picking them up each time they fell. The days are short, the nights are long. My Lord, what happened? What went wrong? I miss brushing her hair and holding him tight. I miss tucking them in and kissing them goodnight. I will not stop fighting for the children I love as I pray each night to the Lord above. You two are my life, my day, my night. For you both I will bleed, for you both I will fight. So from your loving mom, I want you to know that I will love you always and never, never let you go. Well, thank you, Melissa. Now we're going to go to that interview at Sandy conducted with Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Hi. It's good to have you here today. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask you some questions, and I'd like you to tell the story that you have with CPS. It's a very heart-wrenching story, and I'm sure it's going to draw some tears, not only from you and I, but also from our listening audience. I'd like you to start, first of all, and tell the story in the Reader's Digest consent version, <laughs> if you can, exactly what happened. And then I have some questions that I would like to ask you. First of all, Melissa, can you tell me what county that you're in? Kalkaska County. Kalkaska County. Yes. At this point, do you see your children? For two hours every Saturday, supervised. Supervised. And who does the supervision? Safe Haven in Traverse City. Safe Haven in Traverse City. Okay, now, Melissa, if you can, if you would go through and tell the story uh, that you told me earlier. And uh, so our viewing audience could hear what's going on in your life because this is a uh, terrible situation and I know everyone's going to want to hear because there's going to be um, <laughs> some circumstances that are going to happen after this is viewed. So go ahead. Um, on September 1st, 2008, mm -hmm. my husband hit me for the last time and I left. I pressed charges. Um, I had been taking my children to numerous therapists uh, asking for help, any services that I could get to make sure my children were okay after what had happened. Uh, um, this was before the last time he hit you, you were taking them to? No, this is after the after, last time. Okay. This was after. Mm -hmm. um, I had taken, my son was in individual counseling. Mm -hmm. The three of us were in post-traumatic stress therapy together. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that going? That was great. Okay. I mean, I loved being there with my kids. They really opened up. They, they talked about what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they talked about how much it hurt. It, you know, it hurt to, them to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. Did they talk about the night that this actually happened? Yes. Okay. <laughs> my son, he was eight at the time told the counselor 
And when he closed his eyes at night, all he could see was his daddy hitting his mommy in the head 40 to 50 times. Mm -hmm. My daughter, she said that the, she has nightmares, and the only thing she sees and remembers is the blood splattered all over the walls. Mm -hmm. I was going through counseling. I was doing everything I could. I was under no court orders to cooperate with CPS, to even be involved with CPS. This is after the night that your husband so brutally yes. beat you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I had hospitalized my son twice for anger, mental issues, because mm -hmm. he was so angry and scared. On November 29th, I had taken my medication and went to sleep. Um, I'd like to back up, Melissa. At what point did this happen? You told me September? September 1st, December 2008. 1st. Okay. And what happened to your former husband when this happened? He was arrested and convicted. Now, I shouldn't say convicted. He took a plea, a uh, one-year deferred sentence. If he p completed probation successfully, this would not be on his record. Mm -hmm. um, he violated that probation four times. He went in front of the judge for every violation, and every violation she held 93 days in advance. Mm. That man has never set foot in the jail. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's the judge? Judge Lynn Boudet. Okay, thank you. Um, and then on, on November 29th, they took me to the hospital after my son couldn't wake me. Mm -hmm. I was mentally and physically cleared. Mm -hmm. I had a severe urinary tract infection. I was very sick. Okay, Melissa, why could your son not make, uh, wake you? I have bipolar disorder. Okay. And I take Seroquel. Okay. Um, 300 milligrams, which is a very heavy dose, mm -hmm. before I go to bed. Um, Who ordered you to take that? My doctors had to put me on that. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I was only on the doctor's orders. Okay. Um, I, I had taken that, and he woke up and was hungry, wanted mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. He's a kid. They always want something and was yelling at me from the other end of the house, and he obviously didn't wake me. He, at that point in time, called um, the home where my daughter was spending the night mm -hmm. and had concerns that his mom was dying. Mm -hmm. That friend's mother, in turn, called the police. They came out to the house, took me to the hospital, where I was cleared completely, went home. That night when they took you to the hospital, who had your children? I did. You did? They went with you to the hospital? Um, yes. Okay. Yep. Right. I believe my sister came. It's, it's all kind of okay. foggy, but I believe my sister came to the hospital and took the kids. Okay. Fine. Um, two days later, three days later, December 1st, I went grocery shopping, and the police came and took my kids from my mom. Did you have any prior warning or knowledge that this was going to happen? Absolutely none. Okay. I had been being told by Amanda Woodworth that I was doing everything I possibly could for my children, that I was doing a wonderful job. Who is Amanda Woodworth? She works for CPS in Kalkaska CPS. County. Is she the caseworker? At that point in time, that's who I was working with mm -hmm. until Troy Stockwell became involved. Okay. I'm, and why did he become involved? I guess. I honestly don't know. She mm -hmm. just said because he was the new caseworker, and um, I had asked for a court hearing that the uh, restraining order be revised so that my ex-husband could see our children. Mm -hmm. I believe they should have both their parents. I've never once said that they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, Troy didn't like the way I asked him. I guess I wasn't speaking correctly or just didn't, you know, kiss his butt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so. so let's go back to you were at the store grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did your mom call you? Did you come home and find out? How did that happen? My mom called me and I was in Traverse City. We, mm -hmm. were, we live in Kalkaska. I was in Traverse City. And my mom called and said she was crying. She said, Melissa, you got to get home. They're taking your kids. <laughs> they didn't even wait for me to get back. They took my kids, <laughs> and they came to my mom's home, the police, and Troy Stockwell, and my ex-husband's parents with them. 
And where did they take the kids to? A foster home. A foster home. How long were the kids in the foster home? Uh, a little over a year. A little over a year they were in the foster home. Okay. Did you get to see the children at that time? Uh, I had an hour a week supervised. Okay. Uh, that was a very short period of time that I had that. Mm -hmm. I was told at my, I believe it was my second visit, that if I did not kiss the social workers, but I would never get out of this situation. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And I was at Bethany's offices visiting my children one day. Mm -hmm. I want to back up just a little bit before we go okay. forward. The social worker that you were told you had to kiss their butt, was this Troy now? No, this was Nadine Baker with Bethany Christian Services. Nadine Baker, okay. Yes. All right. Um, I was at a visit with the kids. We were having, you know, normal visit. Mm -hmm. Nadine was not around. Mm -hmm. There was a girl, her name was Abby Swanson. She was the one that was supervising the visit. Um, it, was, it was a good time. I, me and my children had fun. My son said he had to go to the bathroom. Well, Nadine must have been watching from another room or overheard the conversation. Um, she came in the room and said, come on, Morgan, I'll take you. My little boy curled up in the fetal position on the couch and started crying and screaming, get her away from me, Mommy, she's the devil. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Nadine kept running her mouth telling Morgan to come with her, and he still kept crying and begging me to get her away from him. And you never got to take your child to the restroom? No, I did not. I told Nadine, which in hindsight I probably shouldn't have said it that way, but I told her to zip it. Mm -hmm. That was the last time I seen my children for seven months. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak to them for four months. Mm -hmm. Why did they take them, do you think? Why did they take my Why kids? did you not get to see them for the seven months and not talk to them for four months? Because I didn't roll because? over and play dead for okay. them. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't bow and kiss their feet. I didn't say, I'll do anything for you, because I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I would do what I had to do to get my children home, mm -hmm. but I wasn't going to kiss their butt. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that went on for a little while. Um, now, at what point did you obtain counsel from an attorney? I was appointed a court-appointed attorney. Okay. Um, it was kind of interesting. We walked into the courthouse, mm -hmm. and my attorney's name was to be Michael Connolly. Mm -hmm. And my ex-husband's attorney was to be, um, his last name is Seeger. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, we got in there, and I gave my attorney, Mr. Connolly, all the information that I had, you know, showing that I, why my daughter was late for school, you know, mm -hmm. all these things that had been going on. Um, and he come back out of the courtroom. He excused himself for a minute, and he come back, and he said, I'm sorry, but I can't be your attorney. I'm affiliated with your husband's divorce attorney. Mm. I said, okay. So what they did is they went and they swapped the two attorneys around. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. And then uh, what happened? Um, and my children were appointed a guardian ad litem. Mm -hmm. His name was Chuck Moses. Come to find out, these three men all share an office. They ride to court together. Oh, yes, yes. Um, Mr. Seeger was ultimately fired very quickly. Okay. My parents hired a new attorney. Mm -hmm. um, he did very well in the first, in the adjudication hearing. Mm -hmm. But after that, it was just, mm -hmm. it was, we were up against a brick wall. Okay. The judge, Judge Boudet, told me on the record she has other issues with me. Um, the prosecutor, Brian Beach, all of them, they, it just seems like it was one great big web of lies that they had created. And unfortunately, I got stuck in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Melissa, can you, um, I, can you elaborate a little bit more on the story? Where is it at right now? What's going on right now? You told me that you got to see the children one uh, every Saturday. I do see the children every Saturday, supervised. Okay. I pay for those visits. You pay for those visits? I do. Okay. Why do you have to pay for those visits? Because this is no longer a DHS case. This is what the judge ordered as a divorce order. 
as a divorce order. Yes. Okay. The same judge sat on every case. Mm -hmm. She sits on all of them. Okay. So. All right. Um, so can you go on and tell me a little bit more about the story now? You um, are, uh, September has come, okay. You fill me in from that point. From this past September? No. Or from, okay, September came, that's when, the act, when he mm -hmm. abused you. November, okay, came and tell me what happened. I was taken to the hospital. Okay, and then in December? December 1st, they came and took my children. They came and took your children. I want the uh, listening audience to know that. All right, now what happens from that point on now? Um, from that point on, I was continuously being pushed further and further out of my children's lives. Okay. As far as they could push me. Um, I have not seen my children for Christmas, birthdays, nothing in two years. In two years, okay. My children were placed in their father's care mm -hmm. in March or April of 09. Okay. After a team decision meeting. Were you involved to be in that team decision meeting? I was, and okay. it was supposed to be an open forum where you could feel comfortable to speak and be heard. Mm -hmm. Your, you know, how you felt about the situation, what you thought should happen. Um, I didn't feel that, you know, the children shouldn't be with their father. They, sh that, you know, if that's where they're going to go stay, that's fine. I had an issue with them being at his parents' home. Mm -hmm. um, his father is a very controlling man. His nephew has molested my daughter. Mm -hmm. I have it in black and white. You have it in black and white. I read this in the paper. Um, would you like to read it um, exactly what it says? Yeah. Um, where does it start? Down here at the bottom is where it... Okay. Later, uh, okay. When asked if she knew about private areas, she indicated that her cousin Nicholas had touched her there. She told her mother, and she initially described the incident with Nicholas as happening once. Later, when interviewing her brother Morgan, he indicated that he had seen Nicholas touch Kennedy under the clothes. I discussed this briefly with Mrs. Flory, who indicated that she was aware of the situation and had actually caught Nicholas touching Kennedy underneath a toy in the backyard. I asked Kennedy to join Mother and myself, indicating some, some confusion as to her report. Kennedy noted that it had happened three times. The first time was when he went into the garage to get a ball or toy. Nicholas had pushed her down on the ground and touched her. The second time was behind the house. The third time was under Morgan's bed. Morgan was there at the time. He touched her in the bad spot where I pee. She was six, seven, or eight at the time. The weather was hot in the summer the one time. She noted he also played with Morgan's thing. Mm -hmm. She noted that one time he liked her. This was under Morgan's bed. She noted that Nicholas had also touched the friend. She described that she described that Nicholas had told her friends to tell her that she had better not talk to the police. How old is Nicholas? The same age as Kennedy. And what is that age? Twelve. Well, okay. He, he's six months older. Or he would bash her head into a locker. Mm. In addition, it appears that her paternal grandmother has told Kennedy that she was lying and that her father also does not believe her. And what is being done about this, Melissa? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And uh, your attorney tried to do something about it? My attorney tried to keep it to where Kennedy was not to be around Nicholas. Mm -hmm. But it didn't happen? No. So um, as far as you know, it could still be happening? Yes. Have you talked to your daughter about it since then? I'm not, I, I don't. Not allowed to bring it yeah. up? Okay. All right. Not allowed to ask those questions. Okay. Not allowed to ask them. Um, how did Bethany become involved? Uh, CPS contracted them. Okay, for what? To um, look over the, fo the foster care case. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want you to, even though we've covered it for the listening audience, I want you to look in the camera, and I want you to tell why the children were removed from your care. 
The children were removed from my care for failure to protect. Okay, for failure to protect from what? From my husband. From your husband. And they were put in whose care? My husband's. My, your husband's after he abused you so brutally? Yes. Okay. Can you tell the listening audience what is the status of your case now, Melissa? There is no longer a CPS case. There is no longer a DHS case. This is simply a divorce matter. Uh, however, the judge, Judge Boudet, we went to court last Wednesday. I asked for expanded parenting time unsupervised. And she wants a note from a doctor stating that I am medicated. That you are medicated. Yes. Okay. She wants to make sure you're medicated. Yes. Because she thinks you're a bad person. Yes. Okay. Um, who all was involved? Um, and I'd like you to say that loud and clear into the cameras. Uh, in this all started, it was Amanda Woodworth with CPS, Troy Stockwell, Jim Kowalski, Nadine Baker with Bethany Christian Services, Suzanne Brainerd with Bethany Christian Services, Craig Baltima with Bethany Christian Services, Brian Beach, the prosecutor in Kalkaska County, and Judge Lynn Boudet. Okay. Has any of them ever once been on your side to help you? Absolutely not. Absolutely My not. My ex-husband's mother walked into a court hearing and walked up to the prosecutor, Jim Kowalski and Suzanne Brainerd, put her, patted Jim Kowalski on the back and said, hello, our team, how you doing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, if, you had something that, if you had something that you specifically would like to get out to the listening audience right now, what would it be in just maybe three or four sentences? What would you like to say? Why are you here, Melissa? Because I am a good mom and I don't deserve this. My children don't deserve this. They need to come home. They need to come home and be with mommy, right? Yes. Okay. Um, what, what, is there anything, have you, I know you had an attorney. What, um, is she trying to do anything for you at this point? Uh, yeah, we've tried to do everything. You've tried to do everything. That judge, it's just, it's a brick wall. It's a brick wall. Okay. Why do you think it's a brick wall? Do you think she has favorites? I do. Okay. I think she is a very biased, very crooked judge. Mm -hmm. I think that um, my refusal to lay down and play dead mm -hmm. angered her. Uh-huh. Okay. What do you think is going on in the household? Where, where does your former husband live? Where are the children residing at? They are living with his mom and dad, Jimmy's mom and dad. There have been two reports made that Jimmy's father is hurting my daughter. My in, daughter reported that. In what way? He yells at her, he hits her. He, uh, she described one incident where he put her arm behind her back and pulled up on it mm -hmm. until she fell to the floor crying. Okay, all right, what else? Uh, do you, what else do you think is happening in that household? They're obviously not being loved. No, they okay. are being, I, I feel they're being brainwashed. I feel that they are um, trying to alienate, alienate me as their mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think um, the father does not have the financial means to be taking care of the children? No. Okay, he does not. Oh, so, he does have them. Oh, he does yeah. have the fine. Then why is he living with grandpa and grandma? Um, his mom and dad are very controlling, and they take care of the children. It's not him that's taking care of the children. Do you think it was actually them that wanted the children instead of him? Absolutely. Yes. I've seen this in many, many cases. It's the... Uh, Absolutely. The, the, the father or the, the, other, the mother's parents that yeah. actually want the children. Okay, what, um, what is going on with, with like... Your relatives, do any of them get to see the children? They have Nobody. completely cut off my entire family. So Grant, your mom and dad cannot see them? No. Nope. None of the cousins can see them? Nope. Where are they attending school? Same school that my niece goes to, Kalkaska. Same school? Yep. Is this where they did go? Yes. Originally when they were in your care? Yep. Okay. Are they involved with counselors at school? Um, no. That was uh, when the judge ordered this as the divorce order that I see them every Saturday for two hours. Mm -hmm. It was also ordered that the children be put into counseling mm -hmm. and that the father was to incur all expenses. He has not done that. He has not done that? No. My children are not in counseling at all. Okay. 
Um, at what point did you actually get a divorce then from your former husband? Um, it'll be two years, June 17th. Okay. So while all this was going on with the custody case, you were actually getting a divorce at the same yes. time. And so the children were having to deal with both of that. Okay. Yep. Um, do you have some other issues that you would like to expand to the listening audience? Um, some other things you might like to tell them about because it's very hard when you have never been involved in CPS to realize that this actually goes on. I have been involved with CPS. I know what you're telling is true. I've seen the lies. I've seen the stories. A lot of people in our listening audience hasn't. And I feel your heart cry, Melissa. I feel you crying for help. If there's someone that can help, you know, if there's someone that knows avenues that could help you, I, I, I hear you crying that out. So could you just one more time possibly tell our listening audience what it is, how you need help and what you would like? I am up against a very biased, very corrupt system who victimizes people that are weak and preys on them. Someone needs to stop it. It needs... DHS is out of control. DHS is out of control. Yes. They play the God role, yes. and they're mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. I am not the judge and jury, but they do need to be held accountable. They need to be held accountable. They do. Okay. There needs to be change. Okay. Well, we thank you so much that um, you joined us today, Melissa, that you got your story out. And listening audience, I just ask that you will not only be praying for Melissa's situation, but if there's anything you can do to help, please contact us. Thank you so much, Melissa, for coming. Thank you for having God me. God bless you. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, as you heard the story from Melissa, th this is what this program is about. This is your voice, a voice that isn't uh, able to speak in the court system. You're able to tell your stories let other people know what's going on. This is the only way we can fight this is by getting the masses out there and realizing how corrupt this family court system is. I want to thank you for watching the show tonight. Uh, we have a social network and that is miparentalrights.ning.com Come on out, join that. We have uh, events going on, a protest coming up in uh, August. Uh, we have meetings here in Grand Rapids, and we uh, let you know when we're taping our shows. Also, we have a uh, email address if you have any comments, if you want to be on the show, uh, if you ha have some uh, type of future uh, something that you would like to see on the show. Contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrightsgmail.com. Once again, thank you for watching the show. Remember, your voice can make the difference.